Hello everybody, it's Aaron. I know it's been three weeks since I provided an update. It's mid-July and I just want to share with everybody kind of where the Go Grava store is sharing our journey for 2024. So this is kind of where we're at and where we're going to be because I don't want to get too far into debt and things like that and you know just other things. We have to have a okay stop it's good enough kind of thing. So let's let me show you what we got going on. All right, so up above, we did the sign and the branding, and I think it absolutely looks wonderful. Uh, love the color scheme and everything that we have. Big shout out to Isaac, who helped us with that. And we got the trademark registered now, so that was a hell of a long process, going through the trademark process. On the wall, we got our nice, cool neon bicycle open sign, and then we have turn and SC bikes, and then I do want to get a pivot and toolie thing in there. Uh, in the front of the store. So let's go ahead and go on in. So inside the store, the main thing that we have showcasing is uh, Duarte right up front. Now what I wanted to do when I started the bicycle stores, I wanted to do something very, very unique that nobody else is doing and uh, do it in a way where it provides, like everybody in cycling talks about equity within the cycling community, within the business, within the industry. And I said, you know what, if I'm gonna start something and, and do a little bit of manufacturing equity, that's what I'm gonna do. So I went down to South America in December of 2022 to talk to these brands, work through issues in 2023, which I worked through a lot of issues. Maybe half the companies were legit uh, invested money there to figure out who was legit and who wasn't, but F Duarte is one of those legit companies that is Italian budded titanium designed and welded in Colombia through my process here in the United States. And then we work with the customer to actually build them out a magnificent bike. And I'm going to do a review on this bike and tell you why it's different. Probably Moots is using the same material, but why it rides and feels different than those cheaper straight tube titanium frames. The other company that we have and represent in our store is Merino. So Merino makes a very similar bicycle to uh, Surly, uh, but they use chromoly, Reynolds uh, 520 chromoly instead of basic steel. And we can actually build these bikes and undercut Surly uh, at maybe 10% in our store so this is a great competitor i think to surly and we're going to be bringing some cane creek forks and stuff in to put some suspension on these uh, uh, merino chassis that we have here now of course everybody can see up front i got the pivot pivot shuttle sl top of the line brand very expensive e-bike this is a 37 pound e-bike I took it for a ride only in the parking lot and oh my God, I've ruined myself for mountain biking from here on out because this thing is quiet and it's powerful and fast and wow, just absolutely amazing. Let me show you the rest of the Pivot bikes. So Pivot was a brand I was chasing since I started the store and it took like three or four months before the sales rep finally came out. But we have the Switchblade as a demo. We have the Pivot Vault as a demo and I'm still working on the Pivot uh, Brunch Ride, the uh, 429 right there, which is a really amazing bike. P Pivot makes some amazing bikes. And I went with Pivot specifically because, or at least that was my first mountain biking brand I want to go with because their owners seem to be anal about engineering, like really, really anal. And then when they ship their bikes to me, I'm more involved in the build process, which I really like. Some bike shops may not like that, the extra building that you have to do, but I actually enjoy it because it gives me a lot more control over how well that, that bicycle's built before I hand it off to the customer. Okay, so after that we have Fuji. Now Fuji, thank goodness I could get Fuji because Fuji is more in the budget line brand. Uh, for instance, we can get a full suspension mountain bike for $19.99, or we can upgrade components and be in the $29.99 range for all mountain, all trail, cross country bikes. And it really gives somebody who comes into my store an option uh, if they don't want to spend $6,000 or $7,000 on a mountain bike. It gives them a more budget-friendly option, and these bikes work really just as well. Or, you know, they work good, but the componentry is the lower-grade componentry stuff, and that's really what you're paying for uh, when you get into the higher-end mountain bikes is the carbon fiber and really the high-end componentry. So thank goodness we have Fuji with us to give people options to get into bicycles at a more affordable price. And then I have Breezer. So Breezer bikes, again, another affordable option to get into flat bar, 
or touring or stuff like that. Kind of in the same range as like Surly or just below Surly, all, uh, all city bicycles, things like that. Again, you don't want to stock a store with super expensive stuff. So Breezer gives us some options. It gets people on the road, on the bicycles in a uh, very productive way that meets their, meets their budget. And then along that ride, that, that area, nobody does BMX in my area, like really supports the BMX community uh, that much. So we have SC bikes here. Uh, SC was one of those bikes, like SC Redline GT, were one of those bikes that I lusted after as a kid in the 80s. Uh, I ended up with a uh, Diamondback. And uh, yeah, SC is just an amazing brand and I'm glad to have SC in here. I got a lot of younger people wanting to do wheelies and things like that uh, really interested in buying some of these SC bikes that we have and lastly but not least we have turn which i think is the most unique uh, cargo slash folding bike brand slash e-bike brand in the market matter of fact the orox won e-bike of the year 2024 euro bike uh, so this is this is an amazing brand to have and i'm really happy to have them in my store and I've sold, this is what I've sold the most of. Believe it or not, I've sold mo more turns than anything else as far as one brand goes. I've sold a few other bikes, but turn, I've sold more of them than anything else. So love having turn in my store. It's be much better option, I think, than a $1,500 Brompton. So there we go. Now other brands in the store, of course, we have Tofosi. I got them up and running. And then I have a WTB and Pro Logo seat testing program in the store so you can test out a seat before you actually buy it and i think that's a great idea and we also do our full service and maintenance uh prices up on the wall still thinking i might have to raise those prices but we'll see and then i created a off-road gravel mountain bike uh, wall here and i'm really focusing heavy on wtb but i did add like pan eraser since they're made in japan and then i made uh, uh some uh tear veils uh in there in the mix at the back of the store we have our maintenance section and i am loaded up with maintenance now so today's really going to be a big maintenance day i got a lot of bikes to fix uh, and things like that and i'm doing a conversion right now which we're going to go ahead and do put a shram rival etap access etap system on a specialized bike i'm really looking forward to that then we talk about the tool shop i got i to tell you this in the beginning i thought i had 75 percent of the tools i was absolutely wrong as I've been learning as a mechanic, I probably had 30% of the tools. <laughs> and I've been buying so many tools, it is insane. Like I, I did, Things I had to learn. I didn't know there was a, I thought the CCP22 was, uh, you know, the uh, crank puller was the only thing you needed, but found out yesterday I need a CCP44 also. So there are some things that you don't know as an amateur mechanic. You think you're awesome, you're doing all your mechanic work, but then you get all these different brands in your store and you realize quickly that, wow, the complexity of brake pads and bottom brackets and uh, all, these, all this componentry is way more complex than you actually thought it was. And lastly, I'm gonna show you the room back here where we do all of our clothing printing and stuff and it's really a mess, so I, but I'll show it anyways. But we have just some stuff, my personal bike stuffed up in here, but embroidery, shirt printing, heat press, things like that back here, some packing materials for our online orders, our printer down here uh, to print out our postage and stuff from our Shopify account. May change that in the future, that's, but that's gonna be a 2025 project. So this was just a tremendous amount of work. Like I said, I went to South America first in December of 2022 to start the Grava brand. Actually formed a company in January 23, didn't get a store contract uh, lease until January 24. And I mostly did that because I had a hunch it might be difficult to get brands in a bike store, and it was. It was very difficult in the beginning. It's something I didn't understand is there's an aspect to opening a bike store because uh, if you own a brand, it's not like the brands have to work with you. They don't. You know, I went around to a bunch of different companies, a bunch of different brands and see who I could get access to for bicycles in my bike store. And a lot of companies just never responded. Or if they did respond, they said they wouldn't work with me or they weren't interested in working with me. Even when you have a guy that says, oh, I have a whole bunch of money, let's spend it. I'm going to buy your bikes. Crickets. You send emails off, nobody replies. <laughs> so this power I thought I had, I thought I had this power coming into uh, 
June 20, uh, January 2024, I was like, oh, I got this money. There's this excess in bicycles. I'm going to contact all these bicycle reps and I'm going to spend money. And then quickly I realized in April of 24 that nobody was replying to me. Nobody was, nobody cared. Nobody gave a shit, uh, just to be honest with you. And it was very difficult uh, to get bike brands in the store. And if you don't have bicycles in a store, are you actually a bicycle shop? Uh, that's a big question. Now, we get into financing and things like that. Uh, I do have customer financing now because as I've brought in like Pivot, which is a really amazing brand, uh, some people, it's better to finance some of these bikes uh, if you don't have the cash on hand to, to pay outright. Uh, for financing at GoGrava, you know, if you want to do 36 months of financing, I use Synch Synchrony, so that's, that's who I'm using. You know, you get 9.99% on a 36 month uh, loan to finance a bike, which is a lot better than the 24% the credit card's gonna charge you. So uh, yeah, I think it's a great option. And uh, yeah, building a brand and doing things. Okay, what is some of the feedback that I have or some of the things I've noticed? So I've already talked about getting access to bike brands and things like that and how hard it was. Uh, it was a lot harder than I thought it was, getting accounts set up and things like that. Uh, the other thing I noticed is, is there's just a lot of helpful people out there. I just get a ton of people giving me advice all the time. They have, you know, business ideas they want to propose and, and, and things like that. Um, you know, I love people's ideas. I do. So if anybody ever has an idea, I'll take your idea. But understanding that or what I've figured out in the, in the past year and a half is having I, an idea is only point. 1.01% of the equation. <laughs> Great ideas are, are abundant. <laughs> They're everywhere. But execution is what really gets things done. Having the ability to execute on an idea is 99.9% .9 of everything you do in business. And then I learned uh, the other way, or another thing I learned in 2024 is if you want to start in the bike industry and start a bike shop, you know, you got to have a lot of money saved up. I haven't been able to pay myself still. Still haven't got profitable, uh, but we're making more and more money every day, every week, every month. Uh, it won't be long before, uh, yeah, we're turning around some great things and doing some great things in our local community and with our customers. Looking at when you're starting a bicycle shop, you really have, or any business really, you have two paths. You buy an existing business or you start a new business. Starting a new business and what I choose to, chose to do with starting a new business is the hardest path. It is absolutely the hardest path. You have zero customer base. Nobody has a habit of coming to you. You have to try to break habits of people. Don't go to that bike shop, come to, come to my bike shop, uh, buy here, buy on my online store, not on that online store. You're really trying to break habits and, or, or you're trying to create new habits that benefit your business uh, when you start something new. If I'd have bought an existing bike shop, it would have been a hell of a lot easier to do what I'm doing. So basically, I'd buy an existing bike shop, keep those customers, which you're bringing in revenue. Uh, you might have to pay, you know, you'd either buy the building the business is in if they own it, or you would be buying really the customers. And then when you work through that process, maybe you don't buy the building, maybe you rent out on a lease, three-year lease as part of the contract, the business contract of buying a business, but it gets you to a paycheck much quicker. If you don't have the fortitude or the savings uh, to get through you know, a year and a half or two years and not getting paid, then I would say maybe buying an existing bicycle shop is the way to go. Because at least you're, you know, and, and don't think of that as buying the bicycle shop's name. Really, you're just buying the customers. You go through a rebranding process once you buy the bike shop. So if you have a different brand, well, it's pretty simple. You go through a rebranding process, which is the paint, the colors, the sign, the online presence, you kind of change everything out with your new business and you do that over a 12 month period. So it's not so shocking for everybody, but you slowly kind of involved in the community, or at least how I would do it, is I'd involve the community into my brand building journey or my brand changing journey. Uh, and that's the easiest way to go if you want to do a bike shop, but starting brand new is hard. It is really, really hard, really difficult. You, you're working every day, you're thinking about everything at night, uh, no time off, just grind, grind, grind is, is what's going on. And I've already accepted that. I knew that coming into this. 
but for me, it was the way to go. I'm a person that needs a lot of challenges, and, and I've traveled the world. I've served in the Marine Corps 20 years, challenging, went to war many, many times, I had five tours in the Middle East, very challenging. Uh, it was a stay-at-home dad for three years after I retired, extremely challenging, with my kids being three years old, 17 months old, and three months old. I mean, that's, for a guy, to stay at home with three little kids like that, two diapers to change, super challenging. Joined into the Sufferfest, which is an online training app, super challenging, became the COO, big challenges. Went to Wahoo as a, one of their lead product managers over the top of cloud and the Wahoo X app, challenging. And then I left that experience, you know, I've, I've, as a cyclist, I've been a triathlete in my 20s, road cyclist, I raced cyclocross, raced road, all as an amateur, didn't, didn't done, I've done bike touring, I've done ultra bike packing. I've worked with Neil Henderson at Apex Coaching in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be behind the scenes in major races. I've done massive amounts of training, done massive amounts of reading on that. So for me, it was just inevitable that I created my own bike shop, my own brand and head that way because that's really been my life for a long time. No matter what I did, I always had cycling in my life. I was always training for something or doing something or working with somebody. And I'm just a very fortunate person that I had the opportunity to create my own brand and do this. So this is all we got for 2024. I am, you know, I'll be talking about other things that are going on now, now that the shop's put together and I'm not changing anything this year. I'm not adding anything else. I'm not doing anything else. Now it's just trying to get profitable and see what we can do in 2025. Yeah, God, I feel like I talked forever on this video. But yeah, I'm excited. Because you know what's a challenge? Starting your own brand and building your own bike shop. That's got to be the biggest challenge of all. You know, I've served my country and did all these amazing things. And at 50, I was like, what's the next big thing I can do? And living the American dream, trying to create my own business is Probably nothing more challenging than that. So going for it. So <laughs> thanks for listening to my rambling, everybody. And I'll talk to you later. More videos coming. See you soon. Man, I just talk way too much.